Hello and welcome to Options in Plain English Advanced Edition. Today we're going to be talking about the add the money straddle as a measure of volatility. The short straddle is a very common premium selling strategy for option traders. It is made up of a short call and a short put at the same strike for the same expiration and with the same number of contracts. In this lesson, we will focus on one particular type of straddle, the add the money straddle. We will derive a simple formula to estimate it, even without access to a trading platform. And then we will analyze the special properties of the add the money straddle, along with potential applications for this easy to calculate approximation. We're going to start by talking about the short straddle strategy. We know about this one. It's a short put and a short call at the same strike price, K, and with the break-evens being on the upside and on the downside, the structure, like I said, short one at the money put at strike price K, short one at the money call at the same strike price. The max profit is the premium of the put plus the premium of the call. And the max loss is undefined. And the break-evens are K plus the uh, max profit and K minus the max profit. So we know about the short straddle, we've used it many times. In this case, we're going to be talking about the at the money straddle, which is a special case of a uh, short straddle. An at the money straddle is a pure play on volatility. If you think about it, when you have a short straddle, you're right at the point where the uh, extrinsic value is at its maximum, is at its peak for both put and call. Now, it's approximately at the money. It's not exactly at the money, but for our purposes, it's going to be sufficient. The um, at the money, right at the money, you have the maximum value of extrinsic. And uh, when you sell a straddle, you don't have any intrinsic value at all. So you have no intrinsic value. You have maximum extrinsic value at the money. And also, the short straddle happens to be the market's consensus for the expected move for that period. So if you, if you see it, the add the money straddle and you happen to pin the, the actual strikes because sometimes the uh, stock price is going to be at a point where you don't have the, the options. But if you happen to pin that strike and you sell the straddle or you buy it for that matter, the uh, that amount that's all volatility it's all it, it has no intrinsic value at all it's all extrinsic that's going to represent the expectation for plus or minus move for that stock price in that period why because this is this is because this is something similar to in uh, sports betting the over under so if you think that it's going to be more, you can you can buy it. If you think that it's going to be less, you can sell it. But this is the equilibrium. This is the uh, the point at which the market has reached the conclusion that this is the expectation for the move plus or minus for that period. Now, what we're going to do here is: is there a, is there a way that we can estimate? the uh, value for the add the money straddle and can we use that value and um, apply it in a in, in in another in a different way so that it can help us understand what a uh, what the options for a certain underlying are well we're going to start by trying to find the formula that's uh, a little bit more straightforward than the actual formula for estimating the, um, the the value of a put and of a call, which would give us the value of a straddle. So, based on Black-Scholes and analyzing for non-dividend paying European options, so in this case, we're going to look at European options because they're easier to calculate. When you want to go to American with early exercise, you, you just need to make an adjustment. But in, in reality, the adjustment is minor and uh, we're going to be um, calculating this for European because it's easier to calculate, it's more straightforward, and um, we're just going to assume that it's the same thing for uh, American style options. We're also going to assume that the uh, interest rate is going to be zero because number one, it's very close to zero right now, and number two, it makes the math so much 
easier. Okay. Okay, so let's start with the formulas. We have a call that in black show is going to be equal to the cumulative standard normal distribution of D1 multiplied by the stock minus the cumulative standard normal distribution of D2 multiplied by K, which is a strike price, multiplied by a discounting factor E to the minus RT. Now, this E to the minus RT is going to go away because R, we are assuming it's zero, so E to the zero is going to be one. So we're going to eliminate this one, and we're going to eliminate the other, some of the other factors as well. For the put, the value of the put is estimated or calculated by having the cumulative standard normal distribution of minus D2 multiplied by the strike price minus the cumulative standard normal distribution of minus D1 multiplied by the stock price, okay? So we have made some assumptions here, so these formulas are going to be simplified a lot. So for the call, we know that ST, the stock price, and K are the same because we're talking about the at the money. So we can use only one factor, one of these two factors, and then we take it out of the formula here so that the value of the call is going to be equal to the stock price or the strike price because they're the same, multiplied by the accumulative standard normal distribution of D1 minus the same for D2. Okay, and the put is going to be something similar. We're going to make K equal to ST, so the strike price equal to the stock price, and then we're gonna pull them out, or pull one of them out, and then multiply it by N of minus D2 minus N, which is the cumulative standard normal distribution of minus D1, okay? So now we have a simplified formula for the value of the call and a simplified formula for the value of the put. Now we need to estimate D1 and D2. So D1 is the, the, the natural logarithm of the stock price divided by the strike price plus R, which is the, the risk-free interest rate, which we are going to assume it's zero, and plus the uh, sigma, which is the, the implied volatility squared, divided by two, and everything multiplied by T, divided by sigma square root of T. This is the uh, Black-Scholes formula. You probably don't need to think about this. If you go to your platform, you're gonna see the values there. You don't need to know this, but we're just, go we're just going to work out the uh, approximation that we're gonna use, and you need to know where it comes from. So I'm going to use the formulas. I'm going to go a little bit deep into the math, but later on, you're not gonna be uh, in any position to uh, where you need to know them. So. Don't worry about uh, if you see a lot of formulas here. Um, I'm just going to estimate the uh, approximation. Once you once we get it, then you're going to use the approximation. That's going to be enough. For D2, is the exact same thing, but we have the minus sign inside of the brackets here. So natural logarithm of the stock price divided by strike price plus R, which is going to be zero, minus sigma squared divided by two and multiplied by T and everything divided by sigma square root of T. So, just a couple of things we can do here. First of all, we know that D2 is D1 minus sigma square root of T, okay? Because all of these factors are the same, the only difference is the plus and the minus sign. So this is the first formula that we know. So we can start trying to simplify these factors. So, um, and we can start by looking at the natural logarithm of one, which is uh, stock price divided by strike price because they are the same is the, lat the natural logarithm of one. And the natural logarithm of one is zero because e to the zero is equal to one. So this goes away because it's zero. R goes away because it's zero. And we're only left with sigma squared divided by two multiplied by t divided by sigma square root of t. Remember, we're still focusing on d1, okay? Sigma, sigma square divided by sigma, you're gonna be having only one sigma, and then t divided by the square root of t is going to be the square root of t because t to the one, and then t to the one half is going to be one minus one half, so it's going to be t to the one half, which is the square root of t. So what we're gonna be left with is zero, zero here, and then we're gonna have one half 
of sigma square root of t. Okay, so d1 has been, has been simplified to one half of sigma square root of t. Okay, and d2, we just need to, um, we just need to uh, subtract d1 minus sigma square root of t. If you have one half and you subtract the whole thing, you're going to be left with minus one half. So now we have d1 is one half of sigma square root of t, d2 is minus one half of sigma square root of t. Now we need to know what the uh, cumulative standard normal distribution is and for that we're going to first of all understand what the cumulative standard normal distribution is and then we're going to apply the formulas by using uh, a, a spreadsheet such as Excel for example if you have it. So the cumulative standard normal distribution is the normal distribution making it standard which means using a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one so that's going to be a standard normal distribution and cumulative what it means is for any number that you want to calculate the value of what you're going to get is the area underneath the curve from minus infinity to the number that you're calculating so we're talking about areas here and we can think of D, d2 and d1 in this way so when we have n of d1 what, what we're calculating is the area underneath this curve from minus infinity to d1 if you want to calculate it for d2 from minus infinity to d2 so in this case as an example i've included the uh, the uh, the shaded area for minus d2 which is going to be the value of the cumulative standard normal distribution for minus d2 this is the example that i have here but this is how this is what these numbers represent now once we know this the um, this area has a formula but we're not going to use it because we're just going to go to excel and we're going to use a function which is the normal standard distribution in its, in its cumulative form, which is, this is the, uh, the formula, okay? Now, what we're going to do is, we're going to estimate, if we have sigma square root of t be, be 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, because these are regular values, these are realistic values. Now, sigma is the implied volatility, square root of time. So let's say, for example, we're, we're looking at one year which is uh, most, most option traders are going to have positions that are less than one year. And a uh, very high implied volatility, if we, if we talk about regular, normal, um, about regular normal stocks, we might be talking about something like with a 50% implied volatility. So 50% implied volatility multiplied by one year, which would be the maximum duration that we're going to calculate here. And you would have uh, 0 0.5 sigma square root of t okay so we're going to see what happens when we have sigma square root of time be 0.5 0.4 0.3 0.2 0.1 okay d and d these are going to be d1 and d2 because this is half of sigma square root of t and minus half of sigma square root of t here okay so we have n of d1, n of d2, n of minus d1, n of minus d2. To calculate the call, we have n of d1 minus n of d2, which is this number. Okay? And to calculate the put is n of minus d2 minus n of minus d1. And all of that multiplied by the stock price. Okay? So... When we get the straddle, we add the call and the put, okay? And once we get the straddle, this is going to be multiplied by the stock price. But also, when we, when we calculate it for different values of sigma square root of t, what you're going to notice is you're going to get certain numbers of uh, times that you're going to have to multiply the uh, stock price by to get the straddle, and then... What you're going to get is you're going to get a ratio that says for every sigma square root of time times this value has, 
what you're going to get is the value of a straddle. So if you multiply the sigma square root of t by 0. Point, in this case we're going to we're going to round it up to 0. 0.8 then you're going to have the value of a straddle. Okay? Because times multiplied by sigma square root of time is what's going to give you the straddle because we have 0.5 multiplied by 0.8 is going to be around 0.4. If we have 0.2 multiplied by 0.8 it's around 0.16. If we have 0.1 multiplied by 0.8 is going to be uh, 0.08 which is the value that we have here and we still need to multiply it by the stock price. So based on this we can figure out and we can uh, we have found that a good approximation for the value of a straddle that is at the money is 0 0.8 times the stock price multiplied by sigma which is implied volatility multiplied by the square root of t so we now know that we don't need to worry about deltas we don't need to worry about anything if you look at this formula it tells you okay for any stock that's trading the add the money straddle is going to be equal to the stock price multiplied by the volatility multiplied by how much time but because volatility works on the square root of time not on time itself you have to get the uh, square root of time and then multiplied by 0 0.8 that's going to be the value of the add the money straddle and it's and it's a pretty important discovery because now you don't need to go into uh, calculating any normal distribution any delta any nothing and and we can just go to the uh, value of the stock value of the implied volatility the value of time and then we can get the add the money straddle and remember half of that add the money straddle is going to be for the call and the other half is going to be for the put so you can also calculate the value of the call by going 0 0.4 times value of the stock price multiplied by sigma, which is implied volatility, and the square root of time. Okay, so this is what the at the money straddle is, and this is one of the things that we have um, found out here by applying the formula for Black Scholes and then using an approximation. And as you can see. The approximation is pretty accurate if we if we use values that are in this range okay so it's a, it's around 0 0.8, 0 0.8 and it's very close to it now let's see what, what else we can do with this formula so now that we know the formula for the add the money straddle what can we do with it well this is a visual representation of the add the money straddle and uh, one of the um, important features when it comes to delta that we can approximate by using the value of a straddle. So as you can see, this is the, uh, the value of a straddle. And then we can start thinking about the different distances in prices in terms of straddles. One straddle, two straddles, etc. We know that when we have a uh, short straddle, we're going to have a, uh, a probability of profit that's going to be around 56%. Why is it not 50%? Because by um, having unlimited risk and limited profitability, the uh, value of a straddle has to ensure that sellers are compensated so that the uh, actual profits from buying and selling a straddle are going to be around the same. Since um, long or, or straddle buyers are going to uh, make money. When they make money, they could make several times what they put in. This has to be accounted for by using the probability of profit. So the probability of profit for sellers is going to be slightly higher than the probability of profit for buyers. But every time the buyers make money, some of those times are going to be more than once what they put in, whereas the sellers can only make best case scenario what they put in or the um, the, the maximum number, the maximum profit, that the, the, the initial credit that they get. That's why the uh, probability of profit is around 56%. Now, the second thing that you can notice here, here's the formula, okay? The Adamone straddle is around 0 0.8, 
stock price sigma square root of t that for calls the add the money delta is going to be around 50. The add the money plus or minus one straddle is going to be the add the money delta minus or plus 30. So if you take a look, for example, here, let's assume that we that you have a delta of 50 for the call at the money. That means that one straddle higher in price, that strike price is going to be around is going to have around 20 deltas. Remember, these are approximations. And then two straddles down or two straddles higher the uh the uh, str the call at that strike price is going to be having um the at the money deltas minus 45 so if you had 50 deltas here at the money then one straddle higher that call is going to have 20 deltas because it's 30 less and then two straddles higher you're going to have around five deltas for that call and it works the same way but backwards in terms of when you go down in price so when you go uh, down by one straddle your call is going to have the 50 at the money deltas plus 30 more and then when you go down two straddles you're going to have the uh, at the money call minus or rather plus 45 so you're going to have 50 plus 45 around 95. So this is very interesting because now if you just didn't know anything about the stock, you don't know where the deltas are and, and you don't know, uh, you have no idea about a certain strike price having that many deltas. You have to go and look them up. In this way, if you know the value of a straddle, you can approximate in your head very quickly at which point the, um, the delta is 30 and at which point the delta is um, is is uh, 45 more deltas than the add the money delta. So, for example, if you want to see and if you want to think about the um, the uh, where the strike price for a certain call having a delta of 20 is, well, just go to the to the add the money. You know the straddle. So one straddle higher. That's going to be where you're going to have the uh, add the money the the uh, a, a delta of 20 which is 50 minus 30 okay so this 30 and then additional 15 so 30 and 45 is uh, is an approximation but it's an, an important one because it allows you to get the big picture and to see more or less how the deltas are distributed along the um, the the uh, price axis so that you know which strike price is going to have approximately how many deltas okay so if you have say say for example you have a um, a stock that's trading at a hundred and then the uh, 0.8 um, stock price sigma square root of t is equal to 10 let's say the straddle is trading at 10 then you know that at 110 the the uh, the call is going to have a delta of 20 and at 120 the call is going to have a delta of 5 now at 90 the call is going to have a delta of around 80 and at 80 the delta is going to be around 95 so this is a, a pretty good very quick back of the envelope way of, of making these calculations and it can give you a um, a pretty good big picture um, analysis of your stock and where the different strike prices could be that where you have the certain certain deltas that you want so what's the application of knowing this formula for the add the money straddle that is very straightforward well, you can, you can approximate the value of a straddle without access to the market. If you know the stock price, if you know the implied volatility, and you know the time that's remaining, then you can approximate the value of a straddle without, it, without actually going to the platform and to the actual values. And it's going to be a pretty accurate, a pretty accurate value. Now, 
in, in, the, in the case of time, just remember that we need the ratio or the uh, proportion of one year that you're using here because the implied volatility is always used for as an annualized value. So if you are, if you are calculating it for 45 days, for example, you need to have in this T, instead of having 45, you have 45 divided by 365. So which proportion of one year it is that you are calculating this value for? If you have one year, if you want to calculate the value for one year, then this is going to be one. And then you just apply the implied volatility value. Likewise, you can have you can you can calculate the expected move or an approximation of the expected move without having access to the market. Because if you know again stock price, implied volatility, and time, then right away you know the value of the at the money straddle. Even if that straddle doesn't exist, let's say for example that the uh, that that um, the um, the price is trading at one hundred one fifty and there is no strike there. Well, this is the theoretical value if a strike price existed at that point so it's it's a, it's a theoretical value but it's a pretty good pretty accurate approximation another application you can you can you can calculate the out of the money deltas and approximate them without having access to the market once you know the straddle you go up one straddle you take off um, 30 deltas that you had from the ones you had before and you go up two you take you subtract 45 from the ones you had at the money likewise if you go down one straddle then you add 30 deltas to the add the money um, deltas and then if you go down by two then you add 45 to the add the money deltas another application you can you can approximate the call and puts values even if they're out of the money how well, you have the, uh, the the values at the money because the straddle divided by two is going to be the call, and the straddle divided by two is going to be the put. And by the way, once you know, once you have the uh, deltas for the call, you can easily calculate the deltas for the put. If the call is eighty, then the the put is going to have an absolute value of twenty. And not, and likewise, when it's ninety five, the put is going to have a delta of five. So they, remember, they they always have to add up to one hundred in terms of absolute values. Okay. So how can you approximate it? Well, once you have the value of the call at the money, and let's say, for example, you, you want to calculate the value of the call right here. Well, you know that the delta here is going to be 50. The delta here is going to be 20. You average the two. So you're going to have a delta of around 35. And then once you have the value here, using the average, which is just an approximation to consider the value of a gamma, Okay, because when you start, it has 50. When you, uh, when you finish, it's going to have 20. So you, you calculate the value of the straddle here. So how much it went high, higher by. And then you subtract the uh, 35 deltas, 35 times the value of a straddle. And you're going to have the value of your call. So you're, what you're basically doing is... Since you know the delta here and you know the delta when you start, you average the two to account for gamma and you know that the value here is going to go down by the value of the straddle times the average of the deltas and you're going to have the new value of a call. Again, this is so that you can do it quickly in your head. If you, if you have access to the platform, you don't need to do this, obviously, but this is a good way to start thinking about um, what the market is and, and and not to rely so much on technology this is something that all uh, that old school traders used to do in their heads all the time so it's something that we probably should have very present in our uh trading because it gives you it gives us a good understanding of how these things move because they're not linear of course another application you can approximate the value of implied volatility by knowing the market price of a straddle. So now let's go backwards. Now we have, we go to the platform and we get the, the price of the straddle, the add money straddle. But you don't know which implied volatility that particular, um, that particular stock has. So what you do is, once you know this, you just solve for sigma. And because you know the stock price, you know the time, you can 
you can figure out which implied volatility a stock price has or a stock has just by knowing the value of the add the money straddle. So you have a stock, you don't know the implied volatility, go to the add the money straddle and then apply the formula and you can calculate what the implied volatility is for that. Now remember, there's many caveats here. We're going to be uh, calculating the uh, the implied volatility for that expiration, okay, and for those number of days, and for the add the money. So we still need to consider that there's skew, that there is um, term structure to account for it, and um, even without even without applying this, this is going to be an approximation. But it's a way to get a feel for where your implied volatility is. Also. Since the square root of 365, which is the number of days, is around 19, you can estimate the annualized implied volatility by multiplying a one-day percentage of price change by 19. So let's say, for example, you want to calculate the value of a straddle for a certain, for a certain underlying, but you don't have a way to access implied volatility. But you notice that in one day, it moved by 1%. So a move of a stock by 1% is implying that the uh, annualized implied volatility, if we take this one and and assume that the most days are going to be like like this one, then the the annualized implied volatility is going to be 19. If in one day it moved by 2%, then we can estimate that the annualized implied volatility is going to be around 38%. And once you, once you have that number, you can plug it into the formula and you can get an approximation for the add the money straddle. And finally, one of the applications that we've used over the years is with the traders that I work with is that you can have a certain multiplier, a certain multiplier number that you have based on days to expiration so that you can quickly get a feel for how much the uh, the add the money straddle is going to be going for. So for example here I've uh, I've pretty much used all the numbers that I know in this formula. So for example for 45 days the multiplier is 0.28. What this means is once I know how much implied volatility a certain stock has. So for example if, if a stock has a um, a, an implied volatility of 20, then by if I want to go 45 days to expiration, I know that 0 0.28 multiplied by that 20 is going to be 5.6%. That 5.6% is going to, if, if I get it and multiply it by the price, so let's say for example, if it's trading at uh, $100, then the straddle for the 45 days to expiration is going to be trading at $5.6. Why? Because this is already considering the 0.8 and it's considering the number of days. So 0.8 times the days to expiration divided by 365 square root of that and I get this multiplier. So I just take this number, multiply it by the implied volatility and then I'm going to get the percentage of price that the straddle is going to be trading at. And that, and that way, I can know, I can get a feel for what the uh, add the money straddle, and that's going to be the expected move, so I can get a feel for how much that stock is expected to move based on this formula. On top of that, just as an aside, if you can see here, this is the uh, add the money straddle, the value of the add the money straddle as we change the days to expiration, 60, 59, 58, etc. You can see that at the beginning, it's 32% uh, of the IV that, uh, that's applied to get the straddle, 31, 30, 29. At 45 days to expiration, we have a multiplier of 0.28. Um, and then we go down. One of the things I want you to look at, the, to look at here is we're not talking about the price changing. We're, we're assuming that the price stays the same. So notice how how slowly at the beginning the um, the uh, straddle value starts going down. So 0 0.28, 0 0.27, 0 0.26, 0 0.25, etc. And then once we start getting closer to expiration, 
this is going to accelerate. So for example, when, when we have 15 days to go, it's 0.16, but five days later it's 0.13, and then it starts really accelerating, 13, 12, 11, 12, 10, 9, 8, 7. So you can see how theta at the money accelerates considerably as you get closer to expiration. So everything works the way it's intended, the market prices everything correctly, and it's up to us to get these numbers, get a feel for where we're at, and with this information, we can then start putting on the st a strategy that takes advantage of our outlook for that stock, or for implied volatility, or for uh, how prices are going to move, especially we're talking here about a trade, a single trade, but if you start thinking about a portfolio and you think about beta weighting and um, trying to look at your uh, capital as uh, made up as being uh, made up of several trades, you can see how all of these factors interact when you trade options. When you trade stocks, you don't have any of that. You just Bet on the price. If it goes up, you you win. If you if you if it goes down, you lose. Or if you're short, the other way around. With options, it's uh it's 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 a richer environment. It's uh it's uh more layered, and it's uh it has mu much more nuance. So it's uh that's why option traders prefer to uh, trade options because of the flexibility, and. Um, all of the different possibilities that you have once you start dealing with options. Now let's go to the platform and take a look at a real life example and see how this formula applies there. So now we're here on a trading platform. We're going to be working with Facebook. FB is the ticker symbol. It's trading at 234.91, so pretty much 235, which is a nice round number. Uh, we're going to open up the uh, 19th of June 2020 expiration. So you have the uh, 235 strikes for call and put. So we're going to be using this later on. Right now we're going to go to the chart and we're going to look at the value of implied volatility. Right, right now the value is 37.68. So since we know the stock price is 235, the uh, implied volatility or sigma is going to be 37.68 and the days to expiration is 25. You can apply the formula and you're going to get the value of 18.54. So we expect to have an at the money straddle that's trading for around 18.54. Let's see if this is true. Go back to the trading page. We're going to sell the at the money straddle. 235 put, 235 call. Okay, got it right here. It's trading at 17.77. Why is it trading at 17.77? We calculated a, an 18.54 in, uh, in uh, the value of a straddle. Well, if you look at the implied volatility that's at the money, you're going to see that it's 35 for the put and 35 for the call. So they're not trading at the level of the implied volatility that you see for the rest of the uh, strike prices. And this is very common. This is a, a common pattern for equities. You would have at the money the at the money value being uh, lower than the overall implied volatility that's calculated by blending all the different implied volatilities for the different strike prices and the different expirations. Okay, so we're, what you're going to have is usually if you go a little bit lower. So we have the 235. You you go to the 210. The implied volatility is 40%, so it's higher, higher even than our blended number. And if you go to the uh, 250, for example, here, you're going to have a value of 34 for the uh, calls. So put implied volatilities that are at the money are higher. Uh, call implied volatilities for the out of the money are, are lower. And at the money is a little bit lower than the overall number. Now, Let's try to use the uh, this value, 3586, to calculate the uh, value of the at the money straddle. So what you're going to have is the same formula, 235 in terms of stock price, 3586 is going to be the new implied volatility, 
and you're going to have 25 days to expiration. So now we have a value of 1764, very close to the actual 1777. In fact, it's in between the mid price and the natural. So this is something that's very close to what we see in the actual platform. So you can see that the approximation is, is, uh, is very accurate. Now, another thing that we um, could do is if you take the uh, now the value of the straddle and you back out the volatility number you can you can calculate it you can calculate what the at, at the money straddle is telling you about the volatility now we take a uh, stock price of 235 the approximation we have the value of a straddle now of 1777 and we have 25 days to go if we apply the formula we reach a value of 36.12%, which is what this um, at the money straddle is telling you about the implied volatility and it's very, very close to 35.86, 35.24. So it's a good approximation. Now, let's very quickly just apply the, uh, the other part, the other, the other portion, which is the, um, the delta part. Okay, so you have 235. Now we're not going to have the uh, the actual strike price probably. We're going to go one straddle higher. I'm going to round it up to 18, so it's going to be 253, something like that. Okay, so 27 and 20. So this is a value of around, let's say, 24, 23. So 52 minus 30 is going to be 22. It's very close to the 23, 24 that we see here because we're calculating the value for 253 so it's very close so one straddle higher the the uh, deltas go down by 30 which is what we expected on the put side 235 if you want to go to the um eight to 18 dollars lower you would be going to the uh 220 to 217 i believe if my math is right, 217, yes. So uh, at that point, 217, you have a delta of either 19, 21, so something like 20. So you have the deltas that are 48, and then you you um, subtract um, the uh, 30 that we had based on the formula, and you go to 18. The value here is 20, so it's very close. So we can see now that the, uh, the approximation based on a straddle is also very accurate, okay? Now, the liquidity ge gets a little bit murky once you go uh, down by two straddles, but you can do the calculation. It's going to be something that's going to be very close to the, the value that we calculated when we go up or down two straddles. So as you can see, this formula is a uh, probably you're probably not going to be using it uh, a lot or maybe at all, but it's good to understand that um, the the value of the at the money straddle can be used a as a uh, measurement unit or as a yardstick or as a uh, as a sort of um, standard deviation of volatility because it allows you to move in the uh, price axis and uh, a one straddle move is significant in in a sense that you know how many deltas you're going to be going down by and 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 also two straddles so it's important that you know that you can you have this approximation that you can use it quickly although the uh, square root of time is probably hard to do it by in in your head you can still see that if you have a calculator nearby or you have your phone and you don't have access to the market, you can easily get the value of a, uh, a uh, hypothetical at the money straddle and then you can use it to start calculating deltas and you know more or less um, you have a good big picture of your stock and, and uh, of course, this stock's options. I hope that this information is going to be useful for you guys that you can apply it and that it can make you a better trader and especially a better option trader and also that uh, it helps you understand more or less more about the world of options thank you very much for your attention and goodbye